I had left Hubbard and uh, gone up to Minnesota and wanted a remarkable person, Ronald Howes, and then I went off in the world to tell people that it was possible to become clear. This was a, a period that most people aren't familiar with now that Dynetics was almost dead because Hubbard had not been able to demonstrate a clear to anybody's satisfaction. And I went off on my own. I went, ended up with uh, with an invite to um, A. E. Van Vogt's uh, uh, Hubbard Dynetic Center, Research Center. In fact, the address was 71, 75 and a half Sunset Boulevard. Uh, that was in uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, Hollywood. Right. right. Not far from the Grauman Theater. Okay. And uh, that's when I got to be friends of, of uh, Vans. I gave lectures there for a week or so. I forgot how long. One night I had a guy come up to me uh, with this box about so big. His name was... His name was Balmy Matheson. Uh-huh. Okay. Bud Eubanks was the name of the other guy I was trying to think of. About Bud. Bud Eubanks. Okay. The one where he pulled him out of his head and let him go around for three days. Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, Balmy Matheson came to me after the lecture with this big box. He says, he says, this will find engrams for you, and if you go on your lectures around the country, if you'll sell it, I'll give you half the, the proceeds. Well, Hubbard had warned us against going into things like that, so I just turned him down. The next thing I knew, when I got back to Wichita, Hubbard had invited all the auditors into a school auditorium, and there he was sitting on a stage with Baldwin Matheson's box, showing him what he'd learned, what he'd learned about engrams. You missed your fortune right then and there. You could yeah. have, uh, you know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Matheson had a. Let's see, it was not a copyright number. It was a, what, what, a trade no, what, what kind of? What do you patent? have? Patent. What? Patent number. A patent. Yeah, patent number. That's right. Okay. Thank you. He had a patent number on it. That a friend of mine in, in Phoenix, Arizona. I moved there for a short time too. I had two friends there. One was a lawyer by the name of Jim Struckmeyer, and the other one was his brother, Fred Struckmeyer. His brother, Fred, was on the Intermediate Appeals Court in the state of Arizona, and I was processing these two people, auditing these two. And uh, Fred, not Fred, Jim, had written to the patent office on this patent number. And what he got back was a, an 1800s threshing machine. So the patent number was false oh. on Matheson's little machine. Oh. And, uh, Interesting. Yeah. So he just sort of made it up, picked yeah. a number I figured that was to keep people from, uh, from trying to copy. Trying to duplicate it, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So. Well, it's probably still done today. People yeah. are still doing that. <laughs> I don't know what all Hubbard did with it. I'm not familiar with the e meter that much, but it's no big deal. It's just a wheat stone bridge. Any physics student will learn about it.